Hello viewers, welcome to another news hour on Germano Media and Products. We now begin with our headlines. MFDC releases captured Senegalese soldiers. Government pleads for patient in teacher strike. Journalists urge to avoid speaking fake news and disinformation. Those are the headlines. We now have the news in detail. Separatist rebels yesterday released seven Senegalese soldiers they captured last month following negotiations involving ECOWAS. The soldiers, part of a West African force in the Gambia, were taken captive by rebels from Movement of Democratic Forces for Kasama's MFDC. During clash that also killed at least two Senegalese troops and one rebel fighter. Senegal said they were captured in the Gambia, while the MFDC accused them of crossing over into Senegal's southern region of Casamas to attack them. The MFDC was formed in 1982 to fight for independence for Casamas. It has been lightly dormant since a 2014 case fire, but has been blamed for sporadic attacks since then and finances itself through timber trafficking between Senegal and the Gambia. The MFDC handed the soldiers over in a deal also signed by a representative of ECOWAS, the Gambian military and the Catholic St. Edigo Charity. At this signing ceremony, MFDC representative Pap Sen warned Senegalese soldiers in the Gambia to stay out of Casamance. The strangers that the Gambia is hosting should stay within the Gambia, he warned. In a statement, Senegalese military confirmed the release of the soldiers, saying they appeared to be in a good health. It denied the MFDC claims that the soldiers were seized inside Casamas. Senegalese troops were deployed to the Gambia, which is bordered on three sides by Senegal, in 2017 to enforce President Barrow's election victory over then-President Yahya Jambe. The Gambia government has appealed for patience in the ongoing nationwide teacher strike as it works to settle all outstanding payments or to them. The Gambia Teachers Union released a communique yesterday calling on teachers in all public schools to put down their tools under advice otherwise. The union said it is taking the decision after it found that some teachers in Region 1, 2 and 3 have still not been paid for the extra classes they held during the peak COVID-19 period. The letter signed by Marie Antoine Cor, the General Secretary of the GTU, said the Prezo group was counting on the teachers cooperating and support in the matter. Most public schools have been remained closed. Speaking to the standard on the issue, the permanent secretary of the the permanent secretary at the Minister of Basic Education, Louis Moses Mendy, said at least 90% of what was owed has been paid. The issue regarding payment for the remaining 10% came at a time when there were some administrative issues which coincided with the government's closure of books. So it couldn't be paid during that time. And now the teachers through their union are saying everyone has to be paid fully. They gave, uh, they gave them an, ult an ultimatum, failure of which they will advise their members, otherwise the permanent secretary explained. He said although the government through the finance minister has since provided the funds for payment, there is a process that must be followed. Permanent Secretary Mendy said he expects all the work to be ready and payments processed by Thursday. Although it is painful, he is asking for patience to allow the process to take place for everybody to be paid and be happy and schools be reopened. It's only GTU that can solve this problem by asking its members to resume work, he pleaded. He said government cannot be expected to violate rules just in the interest of preso groups. They have not been agitating about the teaching and learning materials in school. These are personal monies that are related to them as individuals and perhaps that's why they are agitating and putting their tools down, he said. Former Minister of Information Dembajawa has urged Gambian journalists to avoid being used as agents of fake news and disinformation. 
addressing a forum on how to counter fake news and disinformation organized by the Center for Research and Policy Development in collaboration with Fact Check Gambia. Mr. Jawa himself, a former journalist, said Gambian journalists should work diligently to ensure they write and broadcast factually. The day-long dialogue held at Kairaba Conference Center was funded by the International Republican Institute, IRI. The fact-checking is extremely important because the spread of fake news and disinformation can cause problems for our society because people who spread disinformation have ulterior motives which would sometimes endanger the society, Mr. Jawa said. He said fake news and disinformation can cause ethnic problems and journalists should be agents of reliable information. We need to be extremely careful because when we pick things on social media, he added. The president of the Gambia Press Union, Mohamed Ba, said the media should be in the forefront of combating hate speech, disinformation, and misinformation. We should not allow ourselves to be used as agents of hate speech and false news. Our role is to ensure that undelighted facts are presented to the public to help them make informed choices. The media has more work together ahead of the upcoming parliamentary elections. We should ensure we develop the culture of fact-checking and constantly debunk fake news and hate speech so as to help consolidate our democracy. Country representative for Westminster Foundation for Democracy, Madi Jobate, said the media and fact-checkers have done a tremendous job during the last presidential elections to counter fake news and disinformation. He said although business owners prank fake news against their competitors, the politicians are more against their competitors. The politicians are more notorious for speaking fake news and disinformation. The fact of fake news on society is huge and it can damage peace, stability, make people lose confidence in the government and protect, and protect corrupt officials or institutions failing their responsibility, Mr. Jabata said. Those were the stories for our today's newscast, but before we take a leave of you, let's take a recap on our top stories. MFDC release captured Senegalese soldiers. Government pleads for patients in teacher strike. Journalists ought to avoid speaking fake news and disinformation. Those were the stories. Thank you for joining us. I am your presenter, Mariama Gillen. Do have a nice day.